Time for our, uh, what turned out to be an annual uh, chat with uh, members of the Quincy Police Department's Marine Unit. Mike Foley and Bob Bell are joining us again to talk about boating safety and about boating safety classes. So, uh, hey guys, thanks a lot for uh, virtually joining us here. Appreciate it. Thanks for having us. Uh, our pleasure. Hopefully next time we can do this in person. Um, but in the meantime, um, why don't we touch base a little bit on how this year's boating safety classes are going to look during a pandemic. And uh, Bob, maybe we can touch base with you first and give us the, uh, give us the latest and break, greatest breaking news on that. So um, the state just got uh, the green light to restart some safe boating classes. Uh, so Quincy's going to participate in that. Uh, we'll be running them at 50% capacity. We're still working on the schedule um, to try to uh, get those set up. Um, the first priority is going to go to the people that were signed up for last year and weren't unable to attend the classes uh, when they were canceled. Um, and then we'll try to fit anybody else in after that that we can. Uh, but we'd, we've been going on a long streak that got interrupted last year, uh, probably for 12 or 14 years where we were teaching the safe boating classes. <clears throat> They're, um, they meet three nights or three Saturday uh, days for four and we go over um, all the basics of boating safety to uh, help keep people, educate people on how to stay safe on the water. So are they still going to be at the, uh, the House Neck Maritime Center? Um, well, the House Neck Maritime Center was torn down, so we're looking to run them at the House Neck Community uh, Center, which is a room inside of Manic Community Health off of C Street. Um, unfortunately, it's a smaller room to begin with, and then we have to go to 50% capacity. So we'll, we'll be looking to uh, have about 25 people per class. Okay. And uh, as, as in years past, do they have to sign up in advance, do you know? Yes. Um, for the people that were signed up for last year's classes, the uh, lady, uh, Courtney, from the Environmental Police will be reaching out to them to ask them if they want to attend uh, this year's class first. And then we'll we'll work out how we can uh, add additional people onto that uh, after we've gone through all those folks. Okay. And who is eligible to take the classes? Um, anyone that's 12 years old or older uh, is allowed to take the class. They end up with a uh, boating safety certificate from the state of Massachusetts, which is good in many other states uh, on a reciprocity basis. It's uh, a national uh, curriculum that we use. Um, so, for instance, if you were going up to New Hampshire, they require you to have a boating safety certificate, and the one from Massachusetts will work for people going up there. Uh, as of now, Massachusetts does still not require people to have the boating safety certificate, um, even though there's been talk about a requirement for many years, but um, it hasn't been uh, legislated into uh, existence yet. And is there uh, any cost at all for the classes? Nope. The uh, classes are free. We provide the uh, manuals. Um, there's no charge for the class. Mike, I want to uh, bring you in and ask you, um, how has the pandemic impacted the boating community and, and in your marine unit as well? Uh, last year was really, really busy. There was a ton of people out on the water. I think a lot of people, you know, they, they looked around and said, you know, I can't do much of anything, but, you know, I can get on a boat and go out into the middle of the harbor and, you know, stay away, stay away from people, socially distance from people. So um, if, if you were in the market last year to buy a boat, it, it was not a good time to be because there were, everything was, was bought up really quick and everything. Uh, I, I think the, um, the boating industry has really exploded from this and they're, you know, trying to keep up as, as, as well as they can. But it's, uh, it's actually been really good for that. Do you, do you worry that a lot of inexperienced uh, new boaters, you know, going out on the water without the proper training and, and, and education? We were pretty concerned last year because, as Mike was saying, so many people ended up saying, let's buy a boat because we can't go anywhere on any big trips. Um, uh, and we couldn't teach the boating safety classes, so we were concerned. Um, but around here in the Quincy waters, people did really well. Like maybe the, it was just they uh, 
they just took it slow and easy. Um, they weren't in a hurry. They, they were just out to get away from everybody and, and be on the water with the family, you know, and, or do some fishing or whatever. Um, there, you know, there were some issues down farther down the South shore. There were some accidents and stuff, but, uh, in Quincy, we, for the amount of people on the water, we had a, a really good year. Um, everybody, uh, did the right thing. And it wasn't, there wasn't much uh, craziness out there, which was surprising to me, but, uh, I like to think that our boating courses have an impact, but maybe they had taken the course to class the year before. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, um, certainly. And, and that, that brings up a good point is if you have taken it before, you can, you can take it again, right? There's no, no need uh, not to have a refresher. That's true. That's true. You are able to uh, come in and sit again. Um, un unfortunately, capacity will be pretty limited this year. Yeah. Um, but we have had people that, will, that came back and said, oh, I took the course 15 years ago. I just want to get re a refresher. And they're, they're always welcome. For folks who aren't able to take the course because of the, the capacity restrictions, are there some good resources you guys can recommend where they can at least get some basic information about boating safety? There are some good resources on the uh, Massachusetts Environmental Police website. Okay. Uh, um, they have most of the information that we go through in the class available on their website. They have um, <clears throat> pamphlets that are available that have all the information in them. Um, there's lots of questions when new boaters get a boat <clears throat> about, um, you know, how do I register it uh, and mm. all that, that, informa <clears throat> that information is on their website, um, how, how to do that. And last year there was, there were some issues with registering because COVID impacted the offices of the environmental police. We have to go to register your boat. Um, but their website has lots of good information, um, uh, on it. All the requirements for life jackets, uh, fire extinguishers, all sorts of safety equipment, they're all spelled out um, on the website there. Um, the, the U.S. Coast Guard also has a lot of good information. Um, and uh, <coughs> Coast Guard Auxiliary does as well. There is one uh, new thing coming up of interest. Uh, as of April 1st, the Coast Guard, uh, the federal government has implemented a new law requiring people to use um, their emergency uh, shutoff switch on their boats if they have one. Um, that's like a lanyard that you attach to your person and the other end goes to a cutoff switch on your boat. <clears throat> so in case you fall over the side um, or you fall out of the operator seat, the engine will immediately be stopped and uh, you won't have a runaway boat situation. So, so that's a new federal law that the Coast Guard uh, will be enforcing. Um, I'm not sure how it's going to affect uh, our enforcement. Obviously, we'll be educating people about it, um, but it's a, it's a good idea. That information, we posted a link to it on, our, uh, on the Quincy Harbormaster webpage under links. There's a link to that new regulation there that people can go find, or they can just Google uh, emergency cutoff switch uh, regulation Coast Guard. Oh, okay, and that's, it'll be attached at all times while you're on board? <clears throat> there's... there's um, a whole list of circumstances that, that come with it, when it needs to be attached, how it needs to be attached. Okay. Uh, it, it's, uh, it goes into effect on boats that were built um, starting in December of 2020. Oh, okay. So it's not a requirement on an older boat, um, but it is on the newer boats. As, as far as I, f from my reading, that's what I understand. Okay. Mike, can we um, maybe just run down some of the basics for uh boating safety, the things that, that folks should take with them and have with them and, and know uh, before they head out on the water? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. <clears throat> I, mean, I know we typically do the, uh, the life jacket demonstration in studio, so we <laughs> can't I guess, do that, yeah. I, don't have, I don't have one to wear either, Joe, so I, get, <laughs> uh, I did it. Not, not good planning on my part, I guess. But, uh, I got two in the uh, back. I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can almost guarantee you there's one in there somewhere. Oh, there you go. There you go. But uh, – I, I would say definitely uh, top top of that list is uh, is life jackets is making sure you know it's it's you need to have a, a life jacket for yourself and everybody else that's on your boat uh, one that properly fits them um, you know uh, there's there's fire extinguisher requirements there's uh, no, noise making requirements there's also um, you know having having a VHF radio you know well not a requirement is just a really good idea. Because if you're out on the water and you get into help, you know, you get into trouble where you need help, uh, having a VHF radio to be able to call for help. You know, the, the guy 
you know, the, the, the boat next to you might be able to come over and help you as opposed to w- waiting for uh, the Coast Guard or the police to come come and help you out. But uh, try to think fire extinguishers, uh, the, the signaling device requirements for as far as flares, um, daytime signals, nighttime signals that uh, you're required to have. Um, trying to think. the uh, Does it vary by vessel, you know, by size of vessel or power? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that and that's basically there's a, that's a big part of the course that we teach is yeah. we go over you know there's this chart that has like the size of the vessel and what you're required to have on it. It's probably out of the twelve hour course, it's probably a good three or four hours of okay. it is is talking about you know how many fire extinguishers you have, what size fire extinguisher they need to be, um, that kind of thing. You know what kind of signaling devices, um, all that kind of stuff. And that's uh, there's a test that's part of the the course as well and. Uh, a big part of the test is, you know, if you have a 16 foot bow, what, what, you know, how, how many nighttime signaling flares do you need on it? And that kind of thing, you know? Um, but yeah, there's that, um, you know, we go over, there's other things we go over in the class as far as uh, trailering your boat. Mm. Most people, when they, when they buy a boat, you know, they start out with something small. They start out with something that they might be trailering back and forth, even if it's putting it in once a year or, mm. or you know, you, every time you go, you're going to the boat ramp. And, and putting it in. So we go over a bunch of uh, that kind of thing. Um, you know, we go over, uh, th- there's a big component as far as, you know, rules of the road. There's, uh, you know, the same way that, you know, that there's rules when you're driving your car, there's all these rules when you're driving your boat that you're, that, that you have to obey so that you don't get into an accident with another boat, you know, right. that kind of thing. Knowing or the channel you, markers, it, things like that. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Exactly. So, you know, yeah, the, the right way to pass another boat when you're coming at each other and that kind mm-hmm. of thing, there's a whole, uh, there's a whole bunch of, of, of rules and laws that affect that. And we go over all that in the class. And then, okay. that's the kind of thing that people, you know, w- when you buy a boat and you go out there, cause you can't, you know, the state of Massachusetts, you don't need a license to buy a boat and drive it around. Um, that that that's what we find a lot of people run into problems with is they're they're ignorant about what the rules are or what the laws are and you know they, they find themselves getting into trouble that way sure yeah um interacting with commercial vessels right um what to do around the four river bridge say or the deposit river bridge yes. things like yeah. that yeah. Yeah. you know you know who the, you know commercial vessels have right away sailing vessels have right away over certain vessels you know if you're on a jet ski that you know you you have to you know, yield to other types of vessels and that kind of thing. Right. You know. Yeah. All great information. Sure. For sure. To have, are there actually restrictions on the hours you can be out on a boat? I mean, can I go out at three in the morning if I want? Most boats some... you can. Yeah. I mean, for jet skis, like jet skis don't have lights on them. And even if they did, you're not allowed to operate them at night. Okay. So, you know, anything, you, you, you know, anything with jet skis is, is purely during the day, during daylight hours. Okay. Um, but most other boats, yeah, you can you can operate them at night. And operating a boat at night because boats don't have headlights on them either uh, is a whole different uh, is a whole different animal. It's definitely the the first time you're operating your boat at night. You don't want it to be the first time you're operating your boat at night. You know right. what I mean? It um, yeah, it's very it, it's a whole different animal out there after dark, and it's very easy to get lost, turned around, and confused. Yeah, or hit something, or someone. Yeah. yeah. Or run aground, or you know, get sha- you know, you get too shallow because you don't know where you are. It's uh, yeah, operating at night is definitely, definitely very, uh, definitely increases increases the uh, the stress level on you. No sure. doubt about that. Sure, you're saying something, Bob. I'm sorry. Um, so, part of the classes we do talk about uh, vessel lighting in the in after hours, after uh, daylight. Um, you know, when they're, when you have to have navigation lights on and how to read navigation lights. So if you're out there at night, you can be a little bit more comfortable understanding what it is you're seeing. Hmm. Some of the buoys have lights, some of the buoys don't. Um, other boats that are operating at night are supposed to have lights, but sometimes they don't. Um, around here, it's, it's difficult at night because there's so much, uh, so many lights on the shore. Um, it's hard to see the buoys. Um, if you're over in Quincy Bay, you can see all the traffic lights on, on Wollaston beach. Um, and it can get pretty confusing. Um, but one of the, one of the big things, um, we deal with every spring is the water temperature. Um, Mike talked about the requirements for life jackets. Um, basically anybody that's underway on a boat. Um, 
that's under 12 years old has to have a life jacket on. But there's special rules for kayaks and um, uh, the, what do they call those things, Mike? The surfboards yeah. that you stand up paddle boards. Up paddle boards. Yeah, stand up paddle boards, yeah. Um, between uh, September 15th and April, I mean May 15th, you have to have uh, a life jacket on. Um, in your uh, in your kayak in your kayak or canoe uh, or on your stand up paddleboard. Um, otherwise, you outside of those times, you always have to have one with you. So we see a lot of people on paddleboards that don't have a life jacket, but it is a, a state and federal requirement that they have a life jacket with them oh. uh, when they're out paddling. That's news, I think, to a lot of folks, myself included. It must be kind of awkward to try and paddleboard with a life jacket on. They make, they make some um, interesting things. There's one that's like a belt. It, it looks like a little uh, fanny pack type, type of thing. Uh-huh. Um, and it's, uh, it inflates with a CO2 cartridge. So you can have that around your waist. We see a lot of people with those. And then if you go into the water, you can, man- you can manually pull a cord to inflate with CO2. And it, it comes out looking something like what you would see on an airplane. Oh, all right. Best on an airplane. Um, that meets the requirements. Um, they do make uh, other types of life jackets that are inflatables, and we, f- we find that those are, are good for people that need to be able to, you know, exercise while they're out there, mm. paddle their, their paddleboard or their canoe or kayak. Um, but the water temperature is um, probably right now, it's barely 40 degrees. Yeah. Um, if somebody were to fall into the water with a life jacket on, obviously they're going to be better off, but um as somebody without if they go into the water right now without a life jacket they probably have about 20 minutes before uh they succumb to hypothermia become unconscious and then without a life jacket they're going to drown if they have a life jacket on they could potentially last longer in the water um but that brings us to mike's point about carrying a uh, vhf radio or some way to communicate with land while you're out there because if you end up in the water, if you can call on a VHF radio, obviously you want to have a waterproof one and one that floats. Yeah. Then um, the Coast Guard or one of the Harbor Masters or police marine units uh, should hear you and be able to come get you. Um, those are things we cover in the course, but it's just, you know, the weather's going to start getting really nice here. Like last week, it was beautiful. People start boating and they're like, oh, it's a beautiful day. Um, and they go out on the water and if they end up in the water, they really don't have any idea how cold that water is. Uh, it doesn't really warm up until the middle of June. Right. Yeah. It could be 70 degrees and sunny uh, in the air. And like you say, 40 degrees uh, in the water. So it takes right. a long time, takes a long time to cool down in the, in the fall too. So it's, uh, conversely, it's, it's the same. Yes. The spring. Yeah. That's right. I'm sorry, Mike, did you have something? No, no. Uh, okay. The only thing, the only other piece of advice I could give people if they're, they're getting ready to launch their boat is uh, for, for the season for the first time is don't forget the plug. Don't forget the plug. You know, people pull the plug, the drain plug out of the back oh. of the boat when it's up stored on land so that the rain water will come out and then they put it back in the water. They forget. And as they're motoring around, they're wondering why their feet are getting wet. You know, so. Um, Good, yeah, advice. Good advice. Good advice. Get the plug. That's, that, that's important. The other thing we see is uh, if somebody has like an inboard or an inboard outboard engine, they'll forget to open the raw water intake valve and uh, the engine will overheat. We see that on a lot of. Uh, first first voyage of the spring um that they forget that so they need to remember to do that otherwise uh it overheats starts smoking and we're responding to a boat fire so okay important. good good pieces of advice bob you mentioned that the uh the maritime center is 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 gone but is there um as i understand there's a new boat ramp is that right yes there's a beautiful new boat ramp there um much much better than the old one um, so you can pretty much launch and, and uh, retrieve your boat at almost any tide, um, whereas before it was somewhat restricted to uh, right around high tide. Um, so we have that, that new boat ramp there. Um, the floats for that will probably be going in um, at the beginning of May, um, so there won't be any floats there until then. But there's also parking for people to park their trailers in the lot, uh, in the main lot right there. Okay. Good. Was there actually any ice in the bay this winter? Um, there was a little bit, but not much. Yeah, I, I, I think it pretty much stayed stayed open for the most part, um, at least uh, in this area. I don't know about further south. Yeah, it, I mean, there was definitely some cold snaps where we got some skim ice, but yeah. uh, as far as uh, 
average year, I would say we had below average ice. Sure. Now, are you, um, will you both be instructors again this year for the classes? Yes. Yes. We'll both be instructors for the classes along with a couple other guys in the unit. Okay. Very good. Uh, we should recap again for folks. Um, the uh, classes themselves are being put on by the Environmental Police Department, but they're taught by you here in Quincy, right? Right. It's a collaboration between ourselves and the Environmental Police. They, they administer all the uh, administrative stuff, and we do the actual teaching uh, and give the test as well. Um, so, yes, we'll, we'll be doing that. And as soon as I get the schedule confirmed with them, um, I'll pass it to you. You can put it up and then we'll have it on the, uh, the Quincy police Marine unit, uh, webpage as well. Okay, great. Look forward to that. Anything else uh, you'd like to add? I think we covered most of, most of, uh, what we usually talk about each spring. Yep. The only thing we didn't get to do is our in-studio demonstration. <laughs> and yeah. I'm sure yeah, our audience I, is missing that. <laughs> well, this, this is an inflatable life jacket. So this is one that's, you know, a lot more comfortable. Um, this is the, the other one. This, this one isn't bad, um, but it is all, you know, foam. So it's a little bit bulkier. Yeah. Um, yeah. but there's, there's many good choices. As I mentioned, that fanny pack one, um, is good for the stand up paddle boarders. Um, and there's so many options out there. You can find one that's going to be comfortable for you. And, and it's important to wear it. Um, as Mike always likes to say, if you're driving down the street and uh, you don't have your seatbelt on and somebody crosses over the double yellow line heading for you, you don't have time to put your seatbelt on. It's the same thing with a life jacket. You know, yeah. when things go wrong on the water, they go bad fast. And yeah. you can find yourself in the water before you know what happened. And if you don't have your life jacket on, uh, you're in a lot worse situation than you would be if you did. Yeah, when you need it, you need it right then. Need no. on. <laughs> Anything yes. else, Mike? And the vast majority of um, of fatalities that happen from boating accidents are the people drown. Huh. You know, it's because they get. You know, it's not. You know, because you hit the windshield or something like that. It's because you you get launched out of the boat into the water and you don't have a life jacket on, so you drown. So that's that's why we're always so big on you know uh, promoting life jackets. Absolutely. Really appreciate your time, guys. Um, this has been good. I think it was important to get information out there. Because as you say, um, you know, pandemic or not, there are going to lot of, be a lot of people uh, taking to the taking to the ocean to to find some respites, and uh, it's most important to do it safe. Thank you very much, Joe, for having us on. We appreciate it. Thanks, Joe. Always a pleasure. Likewise. All right. Be well. 